In the 1920s, a habitation law passed by the war devastated France government to build around 500,000 homes. The law stated that these dwellings should be built well and on a low budget. Le Corbusier believed in introducing mass production strategies that were already perfected by the industrial sector as the proper answer to this crisis. In our previous video on architecture and revolution, we discussed his idea of man specialization and humanity attachment to the machine. That coordination between man and machine was not introduced to the housing sector until after the end of World War I. Industrialization was already the main driver for most of the trades included in making houses. Advancements already started in water supply, lighting services, and central heating technologies. The housing structure, on the other hand, was still a thing of the past. Stones were drawn on heavy horses carried toward a yard. A mass of human labor unloaded them onto the scaffolding, placing them in position, making lengthy adjustments to each face, taking years to build. If the proper tools were used, houses could be built in a few months. Le Corbusier, in this chapter, hinted at what would later be known as his five points of architecture. At the time of this writing, Via Savoy was not yet built, but he mentioned the new discovery of building houses in molds by pouring in liquid concrete from above, like filling a bottle. Le Corbusier was hoping that society will dump the building to measure system that dominated the past thousands of years, and that the decent house is a status of the rich only. The mass-produced house is a tool that should be accessible by everyone. His vision was interconnected. The simplicity of the assembly lines that the car and the airplanes industries took advantage of to create beautiful machines is also possible in the construction of our homes. The only thing in the way of having the same systems in the making of the dwelling is the right state of mind as he called it. The state of mind of the people to accept living in mass-produced homes. To live in machines as well designed as the machines he uses every day to travel or to work. To accept the modular system of building that respect the modern human needs while preserving the architecture harmony. Before going into explaining the mass-produced homes, we ask you to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. So, what is mass-produced homes? It is the ideal system of building we use, or at least try to reach nowadays. It is the framework of reinforced concrete, cavity walls, doors, windows, all built to a standard unit of dimension. It is the ability to break down the house construction into smaller parts, each assigned to a specialist. The buildings themselves can be repetitive modules, laid out in a well-devised plan. The plan can bring the beautiful aspect to the simple forms, while the simplicity of the structures guarantees the cost effectiveness. Contrary to the common belief, the five points of architecture are not part of this book. However, the chapter of mass-producing housing of this book did lay out the foundations for this manifesto. So, it is only common sense to have a brief explanation of these points, since they embody the modern construction techniques that lead to the development of the modern cities. We start by the columns, which are the replacement of the supporting walls, laid out in a grid of reinforced concrete. They bear the structural load of the building. Second point is for the free designing of the ground plan and the absence of supporting walls, which means that the house is unrestrained in its internal use. Third point is to the free design of the facade. By separating the exterior of the building from its structural function, the facade is free from the structural constraints. The horizontal windows cuts the facade along its entire length and lights the room equally. And finally, Gardens on a flat roof can serve a domestic purpose while providing essential protection to the concrete roof. As much as you might disagree with Le Corbusier's philosophies, you might detest modern architecture and his unsuccessful attempts to conform humanity to the orders of the industrial age. But by simply having a look around, you can't deny his impact on our cities and the development of the machines we live in. This is the last video for this book but surely we will have more to say about Le Corbusier.
This book was one of his first works of literature on architecture, but we still have many things to uncover about this controversial architect. We would love to hear your opinion of his work and what you have learned so far. Thank you for sticking to the end.